Good morning, Oracles. So it looks like the Berlin can is getting kicked down the road some more. So we just got noticed yesterday on Twitter from Tobias that it looks like the they're going into the final process. We thought was the final process. I guess it wasn't the final process. So they're going into the final approval process, which is hundreds of pages long for them to get through to make sure that Tesla can open for production. This sounds like it's going to take another few weeks to make this happen. So anticipation of actual production opening and starting in Berlin is now slated to be about March. So we may actually see Austin open up before Berlin, which is crazy because Berlin started production or started uh, construction six months prior. So hopefully this is not uh, showing us what the future is going to hold in store for the Berlin factory. Hopefully all of these headaches up front will go away and then we could just ramp production like we did in Shanghai and hopefully faster than Shanghai. And so yes, it is a good thing that we are going into final approval stages for the Berlin factory. Of course, it's disappointing because we want to start ramping as soon as we possibly can. But looking on down the road, when we look back at this five, ten years from now, it'll be a blip on the radar. We will have not even noticed it long term. It just stinks to deal with it right now. In some positive news, the Model Y became the second best selling car in California at just over 60,000, which is just behind the 61,000 sold of the Toyota Camry. Now the Toyota Camry is half the price of the Model Y, so people are willing to spend more money to get a better vehicle that is EV. So that just shows that is the direction we are all going. And so if they're selling this many of a vehicle that is twice the price of the top selling vehicle, that just tells me that once the price of the EVs come down, it's going to be even more of a no brainer for people to go out and choose EVs over ICE vehicles. And we have already been seeing the EV adoption worldwide increasing faster than people had expected. So this just means that we are really moving in that direction and that exponential curve is taking off. And so I think uh, we are going to see higher EV adoption rates over the next decade than most analysts are anticipating. And there was an interview yesterday with Franz, the director of design over at Tesla, and he was talking about the Roadster, and his qu quote was, the Roadster, the flying machine, uh, that's like putting SpaceX in with it. Uh, sorry, that's not the direct quote. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but he's talking about it being a flying machine. Now, my thoughts were when they were talking about it, and I know Elon had mentioned it in the past, was they were talking about the Roadster perhaps having that little rocket booster out the back and being able to hover. So when Franz is talking about it being a flying machine, I think this is actually the direction that they're going to go. You know, EV tolls, that's electric uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, you know, are present. They're, they're over in China, they're over in Japan. Um, so these are things that I think that we are looking for and thinking about the original Roadster, the original Roadster is what kicked off the EV revolution way back when. So this new Roadster may be what kicks off the EV tall revolution. We shall see what goes on in the future. Who knows, are we going to get to the Jetsons before I die? That all depends on when I die. Um, so we shall see, but it looks like we are going in that direction and it looks like the Roadster is going to be Tesla's first dabble into that. And now looking at the stock price, it looks like we have been consolidating uh, for quite a bit for like the last week and a half or so, really been pinpointing around the $900 to $925 range. This morning pre-market, we're down a little bit um, and it looks like the NASDAQ futures are down. Pretty sure that's in anticipation of the CPI data coming out this morning. CPI expectations are 7.2% year over year and 0.4% month over month. So we'll see how those come in. If they come in, I think if they come in uh, even with them or below expectations, we can see a little bit more green in the market. If it comes in higher than expectations, I think it could get ugly. So we may see that gap down to 846 get filled if it comes in high. If we do come in meeting expectations or below, I have a feeling that we're going to see a little bit more of this rally continue further, but that gap down to 846, I do still think is going to get filled probably around March time when we have that Fed meeting and we get the decision about rates going up. And of course, I can't see the future, so I can be totally wrong and we could just completely rally to all time highs. But from what I am seeing right now is I don't think we have enough momentum, especially now that Berlin's 
uh, opening has been pushed down the road into March. Uh, I think that we're still going to be in a position where we're kind of trading sideways. Maybe we get a little bit of a boost. You know, I have a feeling with this consolidation, we may see a breakout or a breakdown based off of CPI data. So maybe we do rock it back up over a thousand with good CPI data, or maybe we fill the gap with bad. Um, it's been trading sideways, so I, I have a feeling we're ready for a big move. I just don't know which way we're going to go. Now, the way I am playing it is in my main account, still doing my dollar cost averaging at $15 a day, and then $15 for every percent that drops below $900. And then in my IRA, I'm hoping that we do hit this pop up so that I can start selling out of the few shares that I have to make a little bit of, of a profit because I do genuinely feel that the stock price is going to come back down. We are going to be on this roller coaster ride for the entire year. And so, you know, we are going to have ups and downs. Are we in a down right now or are we in an up? I think we're kind of in the middle at this point. So that's why we're consolidating. It's extremely low volume. A lot of people on the sidelines, I think waiting to see what's going to go on with CPI data today, whether they're waiting till next month or not, we will find out today once the information comes out at 8.30 Eastern time. And now one thing I have noticed is analyst price targets for Tesla still haven't been coming down. Sometimes you see in the macro environment when the whole macro environment is showing signs of compression and coming down, you may see stock uh, price targets coming down. But when it comes to Tesla, that's not true. Everybody is maintaining their price target. Trip Chowdhury is maintaining his $1,500 price target. So anything that has to do with the macro environment, none of these analysts are anticipating that affecting the price target that they have over the next 12 months. So that's a great sign for the macro environment and for Tesla going forward. So now obviously that can all change. We can get to March, the Fed meeting goes on and then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, we are heading towards recession time and we're gonna everybody drop our price targets. It can happen, it totally can. But this just shows that the strength of the foundation and the fundamentals of the company are there to encourage all these analysts to say, you know what, Tesla is going to do well long term despite potential macro environment headwinds. And even company specific headwinds like Berlin or the chip supply shortage are still both short term uh, headwinds. So it's not anything that's going to affect them long term down the road. Let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about Berlin getting delayed a little bit more? And how do you feel about the Roadster potentially being a, an EV tall? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. Thank you all so much. Have a great one.